The human soul, who we are. You know, half of this podcast has been about that. Who we are. How, how do we even look at who we are? And how do we even know if who, what we're looking at is really who we are? Well, there is a way. The human soul can be turned inside out. And we can see it right out there in the world. It's called art. I love Plato's definition. He called art divine madness. And today, we just want to have a playful conversation. Give some an insightful way to see art, to see this expression of what is inside the human family in, in some playful ways and some ways that are insightful. You see, when you look up art, you can get a single definition, but it's bull. Let me tell you, there's no end to the definition of art and what it is and how it is. It's some kind of universal language that cuts across cultures mythically. It's some kind of, of, of dance that is occurring out of the human soul. And it's us. It's who we are. It's who we might become. Over and over, we see that art, painting, sculpting, dancing, comedy, singing, composing, music, architecture, uh, literature, theater, cinema, it goes on and on. And we're creating new iterations of art. And there are so many already, from the religious to the trite, from the meaningful to the absolutely bozo. All of these are bits and pieces of who we are in all these iterations. And again, these iterations are still propagating. And there's been different ways that art has been used. It's this kind of language. I remember um, uh, the dance of Ganesha the first time I saw it. I could not believe it. Ganesha is the elephant a headed God that removes obstacles. And these two young women uh, from the uh, Hindu temple came and, and did that in our church. And wow, was it amazing. And and there's the, the Da Vinci circuit where art and science meet, where, 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 where art is actually uncovering reality in all its manifestations, making conscious some things that are subtle and not able to maybe point our finger at. And again, the spectrum is from the trite to the meaningful. But it's important for us to see that art connects us to ourselves and each other. It creates a context of meaning and a way uh, uh, to, to share that meaning, uh, to have that meaning both inside and out. And it also evokes, evokes and expresses unconscious content, allows us to see around corners, if you will, and flush out these deeper understandings, even to address taboo issues. And if you don't believe that, go check out some old R. Crumb comic books. Oh my God. <laughs> Pick up one of those when you're tripping on LSD and see what taboos, you go, what the heck? Oh my gosh. And, and for me, you know, I've talked about the Moody Blues and the Beatles. These are connecting pieces. They connect us all culturally, and now cross-culturally, it's kind of amazing. Art, a universal language that is here. And you know, our metaphysic and the anatomy of wonder, uh, the three essential processes, differentiation, complexification, and semi-permeability, those are all most active in the imagination and in the arts because the arts have no boundaries. I'd say science as well, but science creates its own boundaries, and thank God, because it creates a methodology for uncovering truth. Art is a truth of a different order. It's about the fine gradations of the human soul. It's about this place inside us. So let's look at art as the human soul inside out. And my friends, Bob Hayes coming from Florida, uh, Mary Ann Ruddis coming from Spokane Valley, and I'm here in Spokane, Washington, and uh, we dance this dance. We have a conversation every week, and we welcome our listeners. And uh, so, Bob, Art, what say you? You know, Art has been one of the most perplexing <laughs> things that, that I've ever experienced in my life. On the one hand, I love it. I, I 
it, I feel like it opens me up to a part of myself that I wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been accessible in un, any other way. At the same time, I see the economics of art and the, the what I consider just plain crap that is, that is sold for millions and millions of dollars and people just relish saying, oh, I've got this piece of art which looks like it was done by a three-year-old. And it's, it's this push and pull in my own mind that's happening all the time. And uh, maybe that's really the essence of it, to open us up both to the, to the good side and the, and the not so good side. And, and it opens us up to understanding people and it opens us up to really not understanding them at all. You know, how could somebody see see this piece of junk as art and spend twenty five thousand dollars to hang it on their wall when somebody else is struggling and, and and producing just amazing, beautiful pieces and not have enough money to feed themselves? So that paradox is so intense in art that it, it leaves me wondering. Yeah. And, and again, that's just another aspect of the cultural manifestation. Uh, I, I really want us to try to look at what it's saying about us on the inside. There's actually a lot of art that addresses the very paradox you're talking about. Uh, and the exploitation of artists itself. And I think that's just a, another iteration that's emerging that on the justice front. Regrettably, another iteration that is emerging is on the propaganda front. So uh, there's that juxtaposition. Uh, and Bob, you might want to check. I'm getting an echo on you. So you might want to see if you got an echo on uh, your, your microphone there or something. Marianne, Art, what say ye? Well, I think um, art definitely is in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah. And um, it will hit each one of us in a different way. And I think that is the power of art. It, it's, you know, that, that old um, cliche that really is truth, that a picture is worth a thousand words. And when you, when you look at something and it in, invokes in you emotion, and then it takes you to all of these other places. Um, that's and that you can connect on um, a a different level than you can with regular language. And so I think that you know there's there's art that makes you think. There's art that makes you um, explore your emotions. There's but there's also art that just can be appreciated for the beauty of it. And, and it can take, it can be a respite in our very harsh world. And so when you see something that invokes in you just a peace and a calm, and, and art has the capability to do that, um, it can be a respite, but it can also be a catalyst. So I think, you know, it is such a wide range of um, effects that it can have. So... Well, yeah. and, and, and so I think I think a world without art would be a world devoid of um, humanity. I think it it it's it gives us humanity. It, it and that's the, and that's the piece I really want us to see is what is art telling us about what's going on inside of us? And one of the things you said is it moves us. I had not understood dance uh, in the way I understand it now till World of Dance came on. And I saw that it was a language that was speaking about something inside of us that uh, was alien to me, but was able to be communicated to me so that I could experience it also. And the word you used was moves. It moves us. And I think that it can move us to calm, and that's great, but it can also move us to storm, which can also be great. Uh, I'll be honest, a lot of people on Facebook we got to be calm. We got to be gracious. No, we we got to be angry, and we got to have action. And art has got to reflect that in some way. And I think that it's trying to. I think cinema's trying to. Bob, you're a superhero freak. What a, there's a justice that's being spoken 
through all the superhero stuff and uh, looking at the iterations. You were talking about boys and about these boys who have superheroes and they're abusing the hell out of them. You know, that's what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to explore that. It's supposed to ferret out. And I think one of the things I want us to see and talk about in our playful conversation is what are the unconscious contents that art has the ability to evoke? Uh, what are these? Because, you know, you know, Bob, you and I both know Steve Hickman. It's very hard to contemplate a Hickman piece of art without something of oneself being revealed anew. Uh, and I find that with, with... Yeah, that's right, because he was really the master of using archetypal images that, uh, as Marianne just said, uh, evokes some feeling, makes us uh, look within ourselves, even if we don't know we're doing it, because those images are such an integral part of ourselves. And, you know, he could paint a tree, but the shadows around the tree uh, formed an archetypal image that uh, I'm not even sure he always knew he was doing it. Yeah. And and that that's another thing I think about art is is it connects us to this unconscious portion of ourselves that is at the root of everyone, and that's why people can appreciate it and, and why it moves them uh, so tremendously. Yeah, and just as a yeah. sidebar, go to Stephen Hickman art uh, and check his stuff. He did a lot of sci-fi and fantasy covers, uh, but the guy. It was in a league of his own in my mind. Go ahead, Marianne. A little song. Well, I was just going to. I was going to say as you were talking, Bob. I, I kept thinking that you know, art as a communal Rorschach test, right? What you see in it is going to reveal who you are, and it's going to give you an opportunity to explore more of your own self and what what is being stirred up, what's being brought to the forefront. But I kind of go back to music, too. I mean, look at the the songs of the 60s and, and how it moved people, it moved a generation to act and to do things and to not be complacent. So, I mean, art is powerful. It's, yeah. And it's where, it's where to me, ethos and pathos meet. Ethos, think of ethos as a weather patterns of belief and understandings, okay? Uh, you can think of gun laws over the last 30 years or, or uh, anti-choice movement, and you see how the beliefs, they gathered, they created storms, da 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 da, da, da. Uh, And then there's pathos, which is getting up off your butt and doing something. And that's the piece that 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 comes into play. And I'll be honest, when you two are talking, I'm, I'm starting to see art as a portal, uh, you know, a looking into a, another place uh, within the human soul. And when you look through the portal, the first piece you meet, and Bob, you said it, it's interpretation. And we have to see that we are interpreting it. And even there's even art that seeks to address our interpretation of itself. Uh, and, and over and over, I think this is part of what Plato, why he calls it divine madness. Because yeah. it's, it's a place where truth and honesty meet the world head on. Yeah, I'd like to loop back around to something Marianne was saying about, you know, the word art sort of evokes paintings and, and drawings and so forth, but music is art and dance is art, as you were mentioning, and there are all of these different forms of art. And in a sense, the, the Zen approach to life is to approach life as art, to, to live fully in the moment as authentically as possible. And that in itself, I think, is what is at the basis of all forms of art, is authenticity. And again, that's why we relate to it. And, so, I, think, and I think that life is calling us to lead that kind of life, a life where we are a creative instrument, you know, at the breaking edge of time, where we are uh, uh, using our imagination and not just uh, the encyclopedia of what was before but actually reaching for new ways of seeing and looking. That's why I brought in those three essential processes. Everything is doing that. Differentiation, complexification, and it's semi-permeable. And 
It's doing that all the time. I remember listening to the Barney Pip show out of Chicago, uh, going to sleep at night because at nighttime the ionosphere shifts and the AM signals could bounce off uh, the ionosphere. And you could, you know, people in New York were listening to Texas Swing, and uh, you know, it, it, it was the great, amazing cross reference of of uh, creating something new. I think that's what rock and roll was trying to do. It was bringing things together in a new way. And Marianne, you talk about music. Amen, sister. Uh, you know, there's there's a suit, there's a song going on all the time in me, and it's usually Beatles or Moody Blues, to be honest. <laughs> Yardbirds once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that whole semi permeability thing, also <coughs> that that art. Uh, you know, on the one hand, it's it's you're relating to it through your own semi-permeability, but while you're doing that, it's opening you, opening you up to new ways of looking at things. So it's, it's broadening or, or, uh, or uh, opening the doors wider in your own uh, semi-permeability. And, you know, it's creating yeah. a new iteration. And, and that's well, what I want yeah, people it, to see. You are an artistic iteration of what the fuck. Because it's a big mystery and we don't know what it is, but you are, you are the growing edge of it. So man, <laughs> grab a hold of it. Oh, and I love, I love that you use the word portal, um, Red Hawk, because it is, it does take you to a, another place. It takes you to a, a, another dimension almost of who who you are and what what you um, see. So, well, and Bob and I are both uh, he more than me sci fi freaks. And I mean, what sci-fi does is it gives you so many ways of looking at things, dystopian, utopian, uh, you know, deep, trite and subtle. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And the human family, we've been trying to look at ourselves. I, I look at, uh, you know, this week I looked a lot of uh, Hindu art and Asian art and just what are the differences between my way of creating in the West and, and the Eastern, and how how rich we are, that we can look into each other's souls and go, wow, I can relate to that, man. That's the same thing. I have to feed my family. I have to put a roof over my head. I have to somehow get away from the, the harsh weather. Over and over, we see the human family from the first handprint on the side of a cave all the way to the Sistine Chapel and... Doctor Strange, which cinema wise, the freaking effects are amazing. <laughs> Talk about art. Well, you know, and, and I think that's, um, and Bob, you mentioned the authenticity, and that's where the great artists, they, they, they come from a place that is completely revealing of who they are as well. And, and in that place, when they can tap into who they are, that's that universal piece of who we all are. And I think that's where those connections are made because an authentic piece of art that I just saw something that was uh, an amazing, amazing picture that in, I, I can look at it over and over and it was called America Funing. And it was just this very simple picture painting that was it it had so many layers to it with this very simple concept and um and i think that's that's the art that's the beauty of art and the the power of art so yeah and i you know you're you bring up this connection piece and i think that that's that's everything it's letting each other in when we learn this uh semi permeability i call it but when we learn to let the freaking world in, uh, something happens. And that's what art allows us to do. Uh, you know, and in the last 100 years, 120 years, cross-culturally, religious-wise, and the artist art from the East and West trading places and talking to each other, we have truly become a global people. And hopefully, art is having such an effect that we are... Uh, all not just becoming a global people, but we're beginning to act locally uh, in a way that is healthy and for the wholeness of it. 
uh, and at least try to ferret out these different different things. And you know, proper diagnosis is huge. Uh, Bob and Marianne were talking about. I haven't seen it yet. The George Carlin special. Uh, you know, talk about a prophet who was speaking who we are uh, before we actually became all of that. And now we're becoming it. It becomes more relevant. Uh, over and over, we see that art is seeking to tell the story of who we are and how we are and why we are and to entertain the great mystery that is this life and <laughs> whatever the hell it is. I mean, it's... Um, well, you know, I, I heard a very interesting discussion today on The View. Uh, they were talking about this guy who uh, threw whipped cream on the Mona Lisa to increase awareness of the planet. And there were, there were two different sides arguing. One said, how dare this person try and, and deface the most famous piece of art in the world? And the other side was saying, well, Scott is talking about climate change, so maybe that's the only way he could figure out how to do it. And it was that discussion itself becomes a, a, a piece of art, a, a cultural. Perform yeah, performance art, right? There's, yeah. There's a and whole it's, genre. It, it again gets back to the idea that, that the world around us, the actions of people are, are artistic in each in our own way. And it gives us a chance to appreciate each other more if we look at, at what what is what is the art that's coming from this particular event. Yeah. And Bob, you brought up, by bringing up the view, you bring up a very important piece that brings the three of us into play, the art of conversation. You know, how do we have a conversation that is integratable, fair, I always say, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the native things is a protector of the shields. The shields are like Robert's rules. They are these, these pieces that have creatively uh, uh, emerged that allow us to have conversation, to allow us to have differences and still come together in some way. And I think, uh, you know, the three of us aren't that different, so we, we kind of have a leg up here. <laughs> We, you know, I, I've participated in some conversations like at uh, NPR here in town uh, around gay stuff. This was 15 years ago, and they could never air any of the conversations. Uh, they just said, you all are awful. <laughs> it was all contention. We had lost the art of conversation. And I'll be honest, there was a fundamentalist there who thought he was our daddy, and he was you know, acting like it. Uh, and I assured him he wasn't anybody's daddy. And he, what do you mean? Um, the art of conversation, the art of speaking what is true. Uh, this is part of what this podcast is about. And I think it's probably part of what a lot of podcasts are about. Us trying to communicate with each other to expand and uh, find new iterations of thinking and understanding and learn to apply those to a world in the name of health and wholeness. Uh, over and over, this, this to me is what art is at every level is about. Am I wrong on that? Do you think, or not? Now, there's propaganda arts too, but I, I don't yes. want to go there. <laughs> it's there, though. But yeah, no, I think you're. I think you're right on. Yeah. So. Well, the whole concept of art as the human family inside out is really a delightful way to see it. Uh, it's a delightful way to, um, I mean, to me, temple art is amazing. You know, uh, in Hindu temples, uh, there's all these uh, pornographic scenes on the outside of the temple. And you go, well, what the hell is that about? And it's like, well, they want you to get all these thoughts out before you come in. Uh, and it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm not sure I'm not going to carry those in with me, but uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, but I'm a Westerner, so... I'm learning. I'm learning well, about the know, human soul. And I, and I think that that kind of speaks to the, the, influ, the influential piece of art, that you can, you know, you talked about propaganda earlier, advertising art. You know, you can persuade people. 
you can manipulate people with art um, if it's done in, in a certain way. But I, I don't know that that's the kind of art that, but, but again, even when you feel yourself being swayed and manipulated, it does create an opening for you to go, oh, why does that sway me? Why does that make me want to do this? Um, and I think that that whole awareness piece of, of what art is doing to you internally, no matter what form it takes. Amen. Is, is and you know, you bring important. up an important piece. We're coming to the end of our time, but it's, it's, it evokes questions. It, it causes us to ask new questions of ourselves at different levels. Um, and on that note, Bob, final comments? Um, I just throw out another kind of art that, that maybe people don't think about that <clears throat> often, and that's the art of listening and the art of critically thinking about what you're experiencing. And it gets back to that semi-permeability piece about how do you open the gates, uh, 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 the doors of perception to, to quote Huxley. Uh, if we can consciously work on what we are doing with art, how it's affecting us, how it can open us up more, then I think that we're really getting the, the most out of it that's possible. Amen. Marianne, final yeah. comments? Well, you know, I think something that um, we kind of skirted around, but we didn't really say, but art reveals truth as well. And I think that, um, you know, it does have the power to, to move us to action, to, um, to influence, entertain, but also to get in touch with a place within ourselves that um, a place of beauty, um, and, and in a harsh, harsh world, um, I think it's, it can provide a, a respite um, as well as doing all of those other, other things. Because really, art, we've got the, art is, is moving, to me, it's moving from the soul. So there's the art of practicing medicine. There's the art of conversation. There's the art. Everything can become an art. Um, if we invoke the soul with that. So to me, art is soul speak. Amen. And I think that that's part of what, what, what we hope that our listeners are picking up is that, you know, your human beings are inherently artistic creatures. There is no way we cannot be. And, you know, even, even in scripture, you know, we're, we're said that we're, we're created in God's image. Well, What's the first thing God does? The divine God creates. If we're made in God's image, and, and then we should first and foremost be creators. But what are we creating? And I think that that's the piece that keeps coming to mind in this great mystery. You know, is the planet? Are we? Are we going to make it? You know, Marianne talked about or Bob about the throwing the whipped cream on the, uh, you know, the protecting on the. Mona Lisa, you know, we're being faced with some really heavy stuff. And I want to just reflect upon the question next week. Will we make it? I'll be honest, some of the, the spirit masters say that doesn't really matter. It's not the issue. I go, what the hell with that? I, got, I want grandkids to have grandkids. So my friends, next week we're going to go, will we make it? Is there, is there hope for the human family? <laughs> oh, my friends, God's peace. May the oneness of all of it be all over you in the most healthy way. Blessings.